it is time for us to just be free in Christ. That, that's, what, that's what we're talking about. That's what she's talking about. It's, it's not a, a coming down on anybody who worships in a certain style. That's not what it's about. Because you can worship God in any style that you want to, but exuberantly. Amen? I mean, you can be exuberant standing there like that, but it's in the heart. Amen? So that's what we're talking about is just having that exuberance, that, that, that joy of the Lord that just drives us into his presence. Okay? And so I, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm clear on that because, you know, this is a positive message. This is something that everybody should be able to say, you know what, I do. I want to worship God more uh, from my heart, from the depths of my heart in 2019. Amen? Amen. And so uh, that's what it's all about. Hallelujah. This morning, I just felt like the Lord laid on my heart to just kind of give you a vision for 2019. Okay? So, you know, the, the scripture that we, we go on in, in, is found in Proverbs 29, 18, that, that says, where there is no prophetic vision, and I love that in the, the, uh, this version, the, the English Standard Version, it, it says, where there is no prophetic ver vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. You know, sometimes people get caught up on this word prophetic. But really, what it, what it says to me is having a direct word from God. Okay, prophetic means that I have heard from God. When I am preaching to you, it is prophecy. Because I am preaching to you what God has given me to speak to the church. Amen? Okay, so that's a prophetic vision is a God-given vision. Amen? So without that, people cast off restraint or people basically get lost. They don't know where to go. Because unless God is leading us, we don't know where to go. Amen? And so we need to have his vision and his understanding of what to do and what it is that he's desiring from us uh, in our everyday lives. Now, uh, our vision, you know, for this church overall, I, I've given a vision statement. It is our mission is to lead people to know God, find purpose, and make a difference as fully devoted followers of Christ. It's so important that we understand this is our vision. This is what God has given us to do, is to help people in our community, in our families, in our workplaces, in our schools, wherever we are, to know God, and then to bring them into the church to help them to find their purpose, to find what God created them to do, and then help them to do it. That's the vision of the church. That is, that is the overall vision. And so uh, when we, we talk about vision, that is what God has called us to do. The only thing is, is that many times we, we get stuck in that leading people to God. I think too many times we get afraid to talk to people about Jesus. And it's time to get out of that, folks. The time is drawing near. The time is coming to an end. I, I believe that with all my heart. The signs are there. Jesus said, you know, when the time, when is the time, disciples asked, when is the time coming? He said, look, you can look around and you can see the signs of the seasons. And you'll know when the time is coming. Folks, if you're not looking around and seeing that the time is coming to an end, you're blind. It, it's, the signs are there. The season is there. Now, I, I'm not going to predict a day or a time because no man knows the time or the hour except for the Father. And when he speaks to Jesus, he says, go get your bride. That's when it's going to happen. But I see, <laughs> I see that there are seasons, this season right now, the signs are there. That the time can be coming to a close. Now, God can do whatever he wants. He can change things around. He can rearrange things and make it look totally different tomorrow. I believe that. I've seen it in history. But the thing is, is that we need to be about the Lord's business right now. And what he wants us is to have a heart for the lost like never before. But the first thing we have to do, and this is my first point, is that we have to have more intimate relationship with Jesus. 
That's the vision that I believe God has for us is to be closer to Him. To be closer to Him. To draw near to Him. It, it, the scripture in James 4, 7 through 10 says, Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and He will exalt you. This is one of my favorite passages in Scripture because it, 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 in a nutshell it tells me how to live my life. Submit to God. Submit to God. And that's not just a one-time thing. It's not coming to an altar and praying a prayer and say, I've submitted to God. It is a daily submission to God. It is getting up in the morning and saying, God, I want your will to be done and not mine. I want to live my life that way. Because then when I do that, then I can resist the devil and he has to flee from me. The scripture tells me he has to. He will flee. It's clear. It's a directive. And I'm tired of the devil seemingly having the upper hand of the life and health of this church. It's time that we just get totally submitted to God and say, God, I want your will to be done and not mine. And God, I'm waking up every day and I'm going to ask for your will to be done. And we're going to resist the devil and he's going to flee. I'm ready to put him to flight. And the only way that happens is when we completely submit ourselves to God and then draw near to him. We have to draw near to Him. You know, so many times we want God to come and find us. But God's not lost somewhere. He's not out in the wrong places. He's right where He's always been. And He's saying, draw near to me. Just, just turn to me and come after me. Just... Just look towards me. Come to me. And then he says, then he will draw near to you. That's the awesome part of it, is we only have to take one step of turning around toward him, and then all of a sudden he's right there. You see what I'm saying? I mean, he draws, he wants to be near us. He wants to be near us. Hmm. Then he says to cleanse our hands, minds, and hearts of all unrighteousness and walk in an unshakable faith. Amen? In the power of God for our lives. That's what we need is a faith that there is a power of God that's in my life. And I need to walk in it. I want to see us draw close to God in our worship. As Misty was talking about, that's what it's all about, folks. It doesn't matter what the song is. It doesn't matter whether we don't start it this way or get it that way or it's not fast. It matters that we are here to worship the one who is worthy of all praise and all glory and all honor. And if we come in with that heart and that attitude and that mindset that you know what, I've come here to worship him. I've come here to give him glory with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to enter into a corporate worship. And we've come in that attitude and we come with that mindset, then it doesn't matter what kind of music it is. We're going to find him. Hallelujah. I want to see us draw near to God in our personal prayer times and in our corporate prayer times. That's why we've initiated this prayer and fasting for 21 days. Is to help us to get our minds clear of all the other things in this world and all the other stuff that's going on and all the desires of this flesh. My flesh desires some flesh right now. <laughs> but you know what? I'm not going to submit. I was feeling so bad last night, I was whining and complaining to Janice because I just didn't have any energy and I just couldn't. She said, well, go eat some meat. I said, uh-uh, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I think she just got tired of hearing me whine. But I'm telling you, I'm not going to do it because I want to draw near to God. 
It's not a matter of just some religious thing. It's not a matter. I want him more in my life. And even though I may be weak in my physical body, I am strong in my spirit man. Because I'm standing strong and I'm going to persist and I'm going to get closer to him and I'm going to pursue after him. And I want each of us this year to, to have a to develop an insatiable appetite for the Word of God. An insatiable appetite. I, I've started a couple of different reading programs. I'm starting to read more in the Word this year than I've ever read. I, I want more of the Word of God in my life. I need it. I need to turn off the TV. I need to just not go and sit and waste time. Amen? There were a few less amens on that one. But anyway, I know we get tired. I know we work hard. Trust me, I work hard. I go, go, go. But boy, when it's time to sit down, I'm just like, oh. But you know what? I'm not going to give in to the flesh. I'm going to grab hold of my Bible and I'm going to read it. And I'm going to get that word in. And I'm going to believe what it says. Because that's what's going to give me the strength to carry on. And to do his will. Listen, I can't draw you closer to God. I can't do it. No one can make us get closer to God. I can show you the path. I can, I can tell you how to do it. I can help you in the word to show you what God says about it. I can give you everything. But bottom line, you have to choose to draw closer to God. He promises if we draw close to him, he will turn and draw near to us. But he's waiting. Picture that. He's waiting there. He's standing there and he's saying, David, are you going to come? He's waiting. But as soon as you do, he just runs to you. Every time. But... He is that perfect gentleman that won't push himself on you. He's not going to make you get close to him. He's waiting on you to ask him. To turn to him. To say, God, I want you. I need you more. I love that song. I need you more. More than yesterday. I need you more than ever before. I need you, Lord. He allows us to stay at a distance if we so choose. I don't know about you, but I choose to draw near in 2019. I choose to draw near. I'm going to spend more time in prayer, more time in the Word. I'm, I'm having personal times of praise and worship. I, I, I'm going to draw near to Him. How about you? I'm choosing to come worshiping and not waiting on the worship leader to drag me into his presence because he can't do it. This team does a good job, but they can't make you get into his presence. All the problems that each of us are facing will find resolve in his presence. Everything that you're wanting, everything that you desire for your family, for your kids, for your home, for your work, for your finances, whatever it is, it's found when you draw near to Him. Forget about everything else. Just draw close to Him. That's what He desires, is that intimate relationship with us. So let's determine to draw near to God. No matter what our circumstances are right now, I'm going to draw near to God in 2019. Closer than I've ever been before. And I believe it'll be an incredible year. Amen? But once we draw near to God, that's when, number two, we get a driving passion for the lost. 
Because that's what's on God's heart. When we're near to Him, we understand that His heart is for everyone to come. How many of you have children that maybe have wandered astray and are not, not in the path of, of righteousness in your life, in their life? How much do you long for them to be right here with you today? How much do you desire that they are with you in that relationship with Christ? I know, I, I, I long for that. I long for my kids to be in such relationship with Christ. Think how much more does God desire every one of his children to be in relationship with Jesus. That's why he sent his son. That's why he allowed his only son to die on a cross is so that he could adopt us all back into his family, that we could come, we could come and be with him. That's why he gave it all. And he has a desire for everyone to come. I believe the Lord wants us to focus not only on our relationship with Christ, but that of others around us. There's a scripture in Matthew 9, 35 through 38. I shared it the other night at prayer meeting, but I'll read it again. It says, And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Here are the things that I believe God wants us to focus on in this area this year. Number one, ask for boldness and opportunity to proclaim the gospel. That's why we're here, folks. He didn't save us just so that we could go to heaven one day. He saved us so that we could then help others find their way to heaven. Amen? So we need to have the boldness that comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. He told his disciples, go and wait until I give you the gift of the Holy Spirit that will give you the boldness that you need to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. You need to have that gift of the Holy Spirit in your life. If you have not received the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I encourage you this year, make that a prayer, a priority prayer in your life. God, give me that gift because I need to be bolder than I am today. I need to be your witness in this earth. And the way that he does that is through giving us that gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives. When we draw near to him, he's going to give us gifts like that. Amen? Because he's a loving Heavenly Father and he desires to give you that gift. He wants you to have it. He wants you to have that boldness. And it comes through the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But we've also got to have a desire for that. Some of us who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you wouldn't know it. Just saying. Because we're not bold. We're not being witnesses. We're not proclaiming the gospel. It says that Jesus went around proclaiming the gospel everywhere he went. People were being healed. People were being delivered from demons. They were being raised from the dead. How did Jesus do it? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Through obedience to his Father, to following after him, being intimate with his Father. Amen? That's what it was. 
Because it says that he laid down all of his, all of his position as God and he lived a life like we do to show us that it's possible. Amen? To have the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives in such a way that everywhere we go, we're proclaiming the gospel. We're seeing people healed, people delivered, people set free. Folks, that's what he desires for us, and I pray that that would be your desire in 2019. God, give me that boldness. Give me those opportunities to proclaim your word. Secondly, ask God for his eyes and heart for the lost. Jesus, it says, looked around. And he saw that they were helpless and harassed like sheep without a shepherd. Sometimes we look around at the world and that's not what we see. We get mad at them because they're crazy. Especially the political scene right now. I look around, I don't care whether you're Democrat or Republican, they're all crazy. It's just nuts. And I look at it and I think, well, that's just crazy. Those people are crazy. That's what my first inclination is. But see, I should look at it through the eyes of Jesus and say they are lost. They are helpless and they are harassed. And they are like sheep without a shepherd. And they need Jesus. And I need to be proclaiming. I need to be praying for them. I need to help them somehow to find Jesus in all of this. Because they're just deceived. We need the eyes and the heart of Jesus once again for our lost world. Because it's all around us. There are so many that are hurting. And it's like we have a blind eye. God, help us. Open our eyes. Let us see. Let us have a heart once again of flesh and not of stone for the world around us. And then the third thing is to ask God for laborers in the harvest and for him to use us. It's one thing to ask for laborers. I need you guys praying. We need more laborers. Amen? We need laborers in this church. We need people that are sold out, ready to go, out there proclaiming the gospel, out there beating the streets and winning people to Christ. I want to see people coming to Jesus. And it's not going to happen just with me. I'm only one man. I can't do it. But I can encourage you to go out and to do it. Amen? And so I'm encouraging you, get the heart of Jesus and go out and win somebody to Christ. It'll be the greatest thing that ever happened in your life besides your own salvation. Man, the thrill of leading somebody else to Jesus is just... Man, it's the greatest high you'll ever have. I'm telling you. There's nothing like it. To be able to pray with somebody else, to see their life just change in an instant. Man, we need harvesters. We need laborers. We need people out there talking to people about Jesus. Not afraid, but bold, proclaiming the good news. We need to pray for it. So if we don't ask, it's not going to happen. But ask and you will receive. Knock and the door will be open. Amen? We got to believe that. So Lord, help us to see the needy and boldly proclaim the gospel. Lord, send us and send us more laborers. The third thing is this, reach our community and world. We need to reach our community and world. As you know, we are very mission-minded at Grace Point. We support 36 different missionaries and ministries on a monthly basis. Uh, these include missionaries in foreign countries, but also local and U.S. missions. But financial support is important but, and much needed. Without that support, thousands of people would have never heard the gospel message. 
So your missions pledges are very important. Trust me. We just spent time with a missionary in Ecuador, and if we didn't support him, and if he wasn't there, there would not be the church plant that there is there, that we went to help, that is reaching people and kids in that community, that is making a difference, because that church plant never would have happened. There are hundreds of thousands of people around the globe that have come to Jesus because you gave your 10, your 25, your 50, your $100 a month. You're a part of that. And that's so important. And I pray that we'll be able to increase our support of the missionaries that have been on the field long term and are making a difference. I, I, I want this year of our missions convention to be the highest amount that we've ever had pledged and to see it come in so that we can support more missions. I also want to be able to help new missionaries to get to the field. We had several on our trip that have said, you know what, God's calling me to missions. And man, I want to be able to say, go. Here's the money, here's the finances, go. Go and do what God's called you to do. I want us to have that. My hope is that you will begin praying now about God, what God wants you to give in support for missions. You know, Janice and I started off with a small amount because that's all we had. But every year, God's had us increase it. Sometimes it's been a lot because I told her how much we were going to increase it, and then she increased again with her own pledge. And I'm like, okay, honey, you know. But you know what? We've never, never gone hungry. You can tell. We still have our house. We still have a car. We're still able to live. We, we take care, you know, we, we're able to do all that we need to do. We are blessed because we give over and above our tithes to missions on a consistent basis. But financial support is not all we do for missions. We also take these short-term missions trips both in the U.S. and other countries. Uh, and as we shared testimonies last week from our recent missions trip, I hope you heard why we feel these trips are so very important. You know, this, this trip costs almost $27,000 to go. It's a lot of money, isn't it? But because we went, 52 people know Jesus today. Amen. Because we were able to support and encourage these missionaries that are there on a daily basis. We came alongside them and we prayed with them and we laughed with them and we, we gave them, we brought them some gifts that they needed for their kids. We, we even brought them a microscope for their homeschool, for the kids to be able to do homeschool. I mean, because that was something that they needed and raincoats for the kids and, you know, different things that we were able to do for our missionaries. All that came out of our support. But it's so important that we, we encourage these missionaries and lift them up and pray for them. But also because we went on this short-term trip, eight of our young youth and adults, young adults, were exposed to missions in a totally different way than ever before. Some for the very first time. And many of them are saying that they want to be a missionary when they grow up, up to that age where they can go. Others are saying, you know what, God's showing me a different way of looking at it, and I believe that's where God's going to lead me in the future. Because we took that short-term missions trip, several of these have felt that call to missions themselves. And I believe that they are going to be our future missionaries to a lost and dying world. 
So whether we go to the Appalachian Mountains, to youth camp, or to a foreign land, short-term missions trips make a difference. They make a difference. So we are also making a difference right here in the Chattanooga area with our ministries like oncology ministry and the buddy break and transformation project and teen challenge all these local ministries that we have people involved in and doing things with are making a difference in our community people who serve in these ministries are they're making a difference in the lives of those that they touch on a weekly basis but I believe God wants us to do more. We need to ask God to give us a passion for unreached or hurting people in our community, then ask him to open the door to help us begin new ministry, new missions, right here in the Chattanooga area. There's things that people have need of that one of us might have a passion for if we would only ask God to reveal it to us. If God's showing you something that you have a passion for, I don't, I don't know, it could be single moms. It could be something to do with, with just helping the elderly. It could be any kind of a ministry that, that God is just laying on your heart that you have a passion for that we can come alongside of you to, to pray with you about, to help resource you, to help you to get the finances to do it, and then help you to get volunteers to come and do it with you. But folks, it's time for us to get out and do the work of the ministry. I believe the vision that God gave me for this year is to get closer to Him. And if the worship team, if you go ahead and come on up, I want you to sing that song again here in just a minute. We're going to pray for some people if you have needs this morning. But I, I believe that He wants us to have a more intimate relationship with Jesus. He wants us to draw near to Him. That's the first and foremost thing. Because if we don't do that, then we're not going to be able to do any of the other stuff. Because you have to have your tank full in order to give to somebody else. You can't give out of an empty tank. So we need to draw near to Him. Then we need to ask Him for that driving passion for the lost. A driving passion. I say driving because... That's an active word. It's one thing to have empathy for those people over there. Oh, I feel so sorry for them. But it's another thing to have a driving passion that helps you to get right down there with them. And to see that they need Jesus as much as you do. And then... Just let God help us to reach our community and our world in new ways this year. So this is my vision for us this year. This is what God has placed on my heart, is to help you draw closer to God. That's, that's, that's going to be my driving theme this year. So I want to get close to Him. Because when we get close to Him, then all this other stuff is going to happen. It's going to take place. But we got to get close. we got to get to a place where we say, you know what, I want nothing more than to find Him. In my morning, in my afternoon, when I'm going to bed, I want to find Him. I want to draw near to Him. Are you guys ready to do that with me? Let's all stand. As they begin to sing this song this morning, I, I, just, I just feel like if you need prayer this morning for a need, if you, if you have a, a personal need of some sort, whether it's physical, financial, uh, relational, whatever it is, we want to pray with you. I'm going to ask my ministry leaders to go ahead and come up here to the front and just be, be prepared to, to pray with folks that are going to come. But I also want to encourage you that if you don't have a specific need that 
you just come and say God I want you and seek after him and desire him and ask him for these things God show me what I can do you may say well I'm I'm too old for that I've given all my time to the church I'm, I'm ready to just sit back and just you know just come to church and relax you know what that's not what he's called you to do I always think back to Miss Gammy how when she was in her 90s she's calling people on the phone every day and praying with them and encouraging them I don't care what age you are I don't care what health condition you're in I don't care where you've been what you've done what you haven't done I don't care where you are in your relationship with Christ you're at a point right now where you have something that you can share with somebody else and it's time for us to say God use me use me however you want to use me help me to find that mission that that thing that you're desiring me to do give me a new boldness this year God pray these things and we want to pray with those that have needs this morning as the worship team begins to sing right now Hallelujah. you hold my hand. 